So what is ADSR? This is the way that we actually shape our sounds. So let's think for a moment about some of the sounds that we hear in real life. So we can see that different sounds have actual different physical shapes to them, right? You can see that these two are plucky and short, while this one is more gradual and elongated. In the natural world, the actual shapes themselves depend on so many different factors, the material, the environment, the actual thing that's making the sound. But instead, when we're making sounds, we use ADSR envelopes to emulate this. So ADSR envelopes are simply just a way of shaping our sounds like we can see here. So first off, envelopes in synthesizers control or modulate things. So in this case, we have an amplitude envelope and you can see we're creating these different shapes with this envelope and that's gonna control the volume of the sound. So we keep it real square. It's gonna sound like this. So ADSR, what does that stand for? It's an acronym for the different stages of our envelope. So uh, our first stage here is the attack stage. You can see that when I drag this up, this controls how quickly the sound goes from zero to its peak up here. So this is uh, a fast attack here. It's instant as soon as I hit the button. And then when a slow attack, You can hear it swelling in over time. So we also have a sustain here, and this is the point at which if I hold my finger on a note and I just keep holding, this is the volume at which it's gonna play when I hold my finger down. So, so you can see it's quieter down here, louder up here. And then when I let go, it stops. So the decay is the amount of time between the end of the attack stage and the sustain stage. So if I have one second, it's gonna take one second after the attack stage to release the sustain hold point. If I make this a bit more obvious, you can hear this. I'm gonna bring the sustain down even further and then mess around with this decay here. So this is a really quick decay. And then a slow one. So the decay more or less speaks for itself. It makes sense when you put the sustain all the way down and then mess around with this. And you can see which sort of shapes and sounds you can create with this. So release is the last one here. And this is what happens when I let my finger go from the note. So how long does it take from the sustain point from when you're holding your finger on to when I let go, how long does it take to reach zero? So in this case, I have 1.79 seconds. So let's have a listen to this one. So we have these four values here and they're actually pretty simple, but they can make a whole bunch of different shapes. By the way, if you are still new to music production, trying to get your feet off the ground, we have this thing called the EDM Starter Kit. It's free, just a whole bunch of presets and sounds to get you started. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave the link in the description below. So let's try and make a pad out of this patch just using these four parameters here. I might actually make another note over here. So there's something like this. I know that with a pad you need a slower attack time, so I'm gonna bring this up a bit. And now it's not so rigid in its start point, it sort of slowly swells in. I'm also gonna bring the sustain up and maybe bring the release out as well. Might also bring this filter frequency down as well. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of unison, maybe something like this. So the ADSR envelope is really one of the most core fundamental ingredients for what type of sound you want to be making. It's important when you're getting a grasp of this just to understand, you know, what type of thing I want to be doing. Is it a stab? Is it a slowly progressing sound? Is it a quickly progressing sound? And how am I going to achieve that with the ADSR envelope? So let's just quickly turn this into a stab now. So what I would need to do here is just to shorten the attack stage. And then I'm just going to bring down the sustain all the way to zero and just mess around with this decay here a bit as well. So I'm also going to reduce the release value as well. So I've just added a little bit of reverb for good measure as well. And now let's just check out this stab sound here. So right now, I've had my filter frequency, uh, this filter movement here, 
has just been assigned to the same envelope that's controlling the volume, which is totally fine. It's a simple way of doing things. But what we can also do is assign this to a different envelope. And this gives us control over the filter and the actual volume of the sound separately. Why you would want this is because slight differences between the filter and the amp envelope can create some interesting results. Just another way of complexifying the sound really. So if I was to delay the filter movement slightly from the amp, just add a little bit of attack here, then you can see this sort of swelling in effect that you're gonna be getting. It takes a little while at first to wrap your head around the differences between the filter envelope and the amplitude envelope and having them separate. So the best way to do this is by simply experimenting with it yourself. There's only so much an explanation can do. So I would highly recommend getting your fingers on this and sort of tweaking this yourself because that's the best way that you're gonna learn. So these ADSR envelopes are great for sound design because we can really assign anything to them. I think I'm gonna try assign this oscillator position to an envelope as well. Uh, maybe the amplitude envelope and let's just see how this one goes. Maybe I'll bring it down. So the body portion of the sound now is gonna have a bit more of a mellow tone because we're going down here. But then the start of the sound is gonna have more harmonics. So let's have a look at this. So the last thing I wanted to quickly mention here is just a little bit of fun, is experiment around with reverse envelopes as well. So reverse envelopes are especially tricky to try and visualize in your head because everything is happening the opposite. So if I was to draw a reverse envelope, it would look something like this. Uh, the release would be like this. So the attack stage would be going uh, from its loudest point down to its quietest point, and then the decay stage would be going back in. And they just make some really funky and weird sounds, so you should definitely experiment around with reverse envelopes. So for instance, let's get this envelope and assign it to some things. Maybe uh, we could assign it to the filter two over here. Uh, I don't know what this is gonna sound like, but let's have a li listen. So now with this reverse envelope, that's kind of cool opens up the frequency spectrum and then closes it down towards like a band pass in the middle uh, with this reverse envelope on the other filter frequency as well. So you can do some really interesting things with reverse envelopes. I just kind of wanted to put that in your mind. So it's something to think about, something to experiment with. Often really overlooked feature. It's a lot of fun. It's actually a really good way of sort of wrapping your head around this concept as well. So envelopes are a really fundamental concept. I hope this video has sort of helped demystify some things and given you a few pointers to experiment around with and figure things out by yourself because figuring things out by yourself is always really going to be the best way of wrapping your head around it. So thanks for watching as always. If you've got any questions or suggestions, I'd love to know. Leave them in the comments below and I'll have a read. Otherwise, if you have enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Nevertheless, thank you for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video.